Um, second, all of you are going to face budget problems. Let me suggest a very radical first idea that perfectly fits the reason Alec was founded. If you would go home and identify every stupid thing the federal government is requiring you to do which waste money and offer them a swap, if they would pass the Omnibus Smart Government and Waste Avoidance Act that liberated you from all the federal regulations that are stupid, you wouldn't need them to pass you a stimulus package to send you cash because you would save more than enough cash by not having to let them micromanage you. Now my hunch is if you went back home and looked around at every federal requirement that cost you money, for example, if you have an idea for a better way of running Medicaid and you looked at how long it takes you to get CMS to approve it and you figured out the cost of waiting, but just take all the different things, I mean, take all the different federal regulations that make state government more expensive and simply propose back to Washington that if they would allow you to not suffer from what they are costing you, they wouldn't have to send you the amount of money they currently have to send you to pay for the stuff they're making you do. You would start an entirely new debate and there's a practical reason this is important. You cannot compete in the world market with the current price structure in the United States and with the current red tape. We won the Second World War in 44 months. From December the 7th, 1941, when the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor, to victory over Japan in August of 1945, is three years and eight months. We beat fascist Italy, Nazi Germany, and Imperial Japan in three years and eight months. It recently took 23 years to add a fifth runway to the Atlanta airport. Now, you can't compete in the world if you are determined to be stupid. I mean, it's a very major problem. We are very interested in gathering up all of the things that the Congress ought to repeal or modify dramatically. And uh, Fred Asbell and Michael Kroll, who are both here from, uh, from American Solutions, would be delighted to hear from you and to work with you. Uh, if any of you would like to, to get us your favorite list, or if you could get, for example, your legislature at the beginning of January to adopt a resolution calling on the Congress to pass certain things. I, I think it would be start a whole new conversation about downsizing the cost of federal bureaucracy rather than increasing the payment for it. And it'll be a fundamentally new conversation. I believe politically and historically, the number one issue for the next two years is jobs. I would recommend to all of you, erase whatever you were used to thinking about and put in the word jobs. Somebody reminded me recently that, that uh, Governor Jim Rhodes of uh, Ohio had a 36 year career and he only had two themes. The first theme was jobs and the second theme was he would, he would take out his wallet and he would say, you know, there are politicians who take money out of your wallet and there are politicians who put money into your wallet. You decide which kind of politician you like better. I believe in the kind of economic environment we're going to be in, people are going to want to know what are you doing to create jobs and people are going to want to know what are you doing so I have enough money that I can stay in business or I have enough money so I can pay what the cost of living for my family. And I would really start by rethinking everything you're doing, and it leads to a great crisis because, frankly, the embedded cost of government is so great that all of you are under pressure to find more money for government, even at the expense of the entire rest of your state. And so you have to confront head on the requirement of finding ways to do things less expensively. In terms of jobs, let me suggest to you that you should look at uh, what Mitch Daniels has done in Indiana, which has the lowest unemployment rate in the Midwest. Uh, what Governor Huntsman has done in uh, Utah, which has the lowest unemployment rate in the West, and what Bobby Jindal has done in Louisiana, where last month in the middle of this economy, they added 10,000 jobs. Now, there are people doing the right things, and the right things are retrain the bureaucracy so it's pro-investment and pro-business. The right things are cut taxes and create incentives. The right things are have the kind of education program that produces people who can actually work. 
And you start doing those things, it turns out people want to create jobs. And the right thing is to reduce the cost of being self-employed and to reduce the cost of being a small business because those are the biggest job creation centers of the future. And so I would urge you to start from a jobs and take home pay model. I believe that in order to save money at the state level, I strongly urge you, and, and we'd be glad to help you with this at American Solutions, but take a look at Dennis Smith and the concept of metrics. Uh, metrics were used by Rudy Giuliani in New York City and by Chief Bratton to develop a policing model which is the most powerful ever developed. New York City today has 75% less crime than it had in 1993. It's the safest big city in America. Uh, Chief Bratton took that model to Los Angeles. It is today the second safest city in America. So first of all, if you have a big city in your state that's not safe, I would urge you to figure out a way to get them to study what Chief Bratton does because it works. And its only great virtue is it works. Um, second, the model of metrics, which we are working very hard to develop and implement at American Solutions, is one I strongly recommend because it allows you to figure out what you want to get done and it allows you to start measuring whether or not the bureaucracy is being productive. And that forces you to change. I, I want to suggest to all of you, many of you have been friends for a lot of years and you've heard me try to develop ideas. I think there are four words that are going to be the center of American politics for the next 20 years. And I think these four words are fundamentally different than what you're used to talking about. The first word is honesty. And I'll come back to it, but the first word is honesty. The number one reason we have the current financial crisis is we lied to ourselves over and over and over. We said you can give houses to people who can't pay for them. You can force banks to make loans they'll never recover. You can have really clever people in Wall Street with paper that has no value, and somehow it's all going to magically work. Well, it doesn't. We watched the auto companies and the UAW lie to themselves for 30 years. You go to BMW in South Carolina, you go to Mercedes or Hyundai or, or Kia in, in, Arizona, in Alabama, you go to Toyota in Kentucky, you go to Nissan in Tennessee, you go to Honda in Ohio. The fact is, for 30 years, the big three didn't want to change. And we got to decide. I'm, I am for facing the facts, changing the system, and getting America back to being productive. So the first word is honesty. <laughs> And you're going to find when you go back home, your staff's going to tell you, well, you can't say X. Because it's better to be pleasant than it is to be honest. Well, that's the road to this country dying. And we had better be honest. The second word that's going to really matter is effectiveness. When the Detroit public schools graduate 26% of their entering freshman time, it should be a national scandal and we should change the Detroit schools today. Not in a year, not in five years, today. And every one of you, every one of you has places in your state where, where you are paying good money to get bad results and nobody has the nerve to challenge it. The third word is productivity. The key to the Toyota production system, which is frankly Deming's use of Western Electric. This is a 80-year-old American model adopted by the Japanese after World War II when we got too lazy to use it. The key to the Toyota production system is continuous improvement. So you show me any part of your state government today and tell me how much more productive will it be in a year. What's its plan to be 5% more productive in a year? Take your state university. What's its plan to be more productive? I mean, these universities are grossly overexpensive because we have sloppily allowed them to add administrators and to add faculty who don't teach in order to have buildings that aren't occupied so the students don't have to worry about it because, after all, it's essentially a social relationship with occasional brief interactions with knowledge. You could take 20 to 40 percent out of the cost of going to, going to higher education if you had the nerve to actually go out and look at it, which is different than how do I loan even more money so they can charge even more, so they can hire even more administrators. 